Hi, it's Alex. Today I want to talk about a topic that actually was like a profound insight I gained that radically changed how I thought about a lot of stuff in life in a really awesome way that I think greatly improved my life. And that is starting with a really simple realization. We don't have, as humans, the ability to read other people's minds. We can kind of coarsely gauge their emotions, but even that is not terribly accurate, like it's possible to misread people. And when it comes to knowing exactly what's going on inside someone else's head, it's something that we just can't do. Now that may seem so incredibly obvious to you, but I want to point out, and I want you to look for things in your life like this, I want to point out that many of the things that people say or write seem to assume a knowledge of other people's thoughts with a level of certainty that's just not possible. I'm going to give some examples of this. One of the things that comes up a lot, and that I heard especially when I was younger, but I still hear people say this, and I hear older people say this as well, are advice that people give about relationships or about communication that takes the form of something like this. Well, when he does this, it means such and such. Or, well, you know what that really means. Like, she must really be thinking this, something like this. And the language that they use suggests certainty, like he must be thinking this, or it means this, and so on. When I'm talking about things like that, I prefer to use a lot less certainty in my description. So I might say, hmm, do you think it's possible that the person could be thinking this, and so on because I know that it's not possible for me to know for certain what's going on in someone else's head. I mean, I don't even know what's going on in my own head half the time. Another arena in which I see this come up a lot is political analysis. So I'll see whole articles written where people are going on and on about why people are doing something. They're like, oh, well, Republicans are doing this because of this, and because they want this, and they're thinking this, and Democrats are doing this for this reason. And I, I don't necessarily have a problem with people investigating and writing about possible incentives and such, but people are really complex, and political parties are complex. And I think it's really problematic when people talk about what is going on in the minds of these political strategists or people in a political party when they aren't those people themselves. Like, we don't really know what's going on with them. They probably have pretty complex motives. I mean, I could imagine if I were a politician, I would have all these different forces pulling me in different directions. And I think it would be impossible to say, oh, I did this for this reason. There are probably like 50 different reasons why I did any one thing. So, I want to like send you all away with this, this message and this sort of skepticism that when you hear other people talking about what other people are thinking, I want you to stop and think and say, hey, is that person overstating the degree of confidence in their knowledge of what someone else is thinking? Because the answer is probably yes whenever someone is making a statement that they know what someone else is thinking. Lastly, I want to talk about the potential damage that this sort of thing can cause in relationships, and also in sort of relationships between groups of people. And that is that when people talk about each other's intentions and thoughts, and specifically when they talk about negative intentions, it can really poison relationships and it can create conflict between two groups of people. So an example would be if someone does something and I interpret it as being some sort of thing that they did out of negative intentions, that can create a lot of conflict between me and the other person. So, if someone says something, and I question their sincerity, I'm like, oh, well you don't really mean that, you're just doing that because you want to get this thing from me. Like, when people say that to me, it feels awful. And I'd say like 99% of the time, when they say that kind of thing about me, it's not true. Like, they don't know what's going on in my head, and sometimes my motives might be complex, they might not be 100% pure or good, but usually when other people make statements like that, they're just flat out wrong, or they're severely distorted. And I often get angry, and I've noticed that when I talk that way about other people, they often get angry. Now let's go back to the political thing. If you read these articles where people are reading into 
the intentions of an opposing political party, one thing that you'll notice is that most of the time they're reading negative intentions in. And that really bothers me, because I know people from a lot of different political affiliations, like Republican, Democrat, and other non-mainstream affiliations. And one thing that I've noticed is that everybody I've talked to at length has legitimate reasons for believing what they do. And often the differences in perspective are due to different ways of thinking about things or different vantage points. So these negative intentions that the opposing side is reading into the whole political party or the people who vote for that party are just straight up not there in many cases. Uh, and when they are there, they're certainly not the only factor. So I want to call on you all to just refrain from that. Try to exercise some restraint in your life. and. I hope that, as, as I have found, that you will find that it improves your quality of relationships with people, and it improves your ability to relate to people who are doing things that you don't like. And that has been like a profound insight for me. It's like radically improved my life. Um, and I hope you experience that too.